r slash ask reddit throw away time what's your secret that could literally ruin your life if it came out i once helped out my female friend's family by taking care of their cat for a week every day for a week i would go over there and snoop around their house i found my friend's diary and proceeded to read the entire thing i used this information to get her to like me and she is currently my wife this is literally the juiciest secret in this thread for some reason. Not totally bland, but not overly obscene. Probably because this is something I could actually picture any person doing if given the chance. I agree, it is not particularly evil, but it is a misdeed that completely altered that guy's life. Honestly, it sounds like a pitch for a mediocre romantic comedy. Guy manipulates girl into liking him. They fall in love. Girl finds out what guy did. They break up. Guy wins girl back. Credits roll. I feel like I've seen this movie already. Two and a half years ago I was in dire financial straits. So I sold my home to keep my struggling business afloat. I neglected to tell the owners that they have an 800 square featuring bunker on the property that I built about 7 years ago. The bunker that I've called home since I sold it. The entrance to it is well hidden. But I still come and go very early very late in the day. I'm a single man who keeps to himself. I'm now in a situation where I could move somewhere else. But I love this hidden paradise so much. I once taped a Mets game without the expressed written consent of Major League Baseball. But why would you want to tape a Mets game? Everyone thinks I have a good job and roommates but I've been homeless and a prostitute for over a year. Please tell me most of you have masturbated to your female friends. All of them. And some of their mothers. And their sisters. This thread makes me realize what a good, boring person I am. This is my old account, so might as well throw it away. While on deployment, I killed a man in a coup de grace. The feelings of taking a man's life always weigh a heavy burden on me every day. No one likes hurting people. He had been hit by some of our mobile artillery. While part of me wanted the bastard to be in pain, it wasn't right. My medic was busy with my wounded, and as the officer on duty I took out my .45 and put one in his head. I knew my boys wouldn't say anything, most just watched, accepted it as a fact of war, and kept walking dart I remember throwing up afterwards. I came home and everyone acted like I was a hero. I never felt like more of a sham my entire life. First time telling anyone this. This thread is so deep that probably no one will see. But if one person does see it, it'll feel better. I am basically living a lie. I told my entire family I was able to transfer out of community college and into a university. But I never finished up the requirements. So since I live at home, every day instead of going to school I go to the local library and BS. My lies are so extensive. I even go to the campus and meet my girlfriend for lunch sometimes. I've made fake transcripts to show my family. And to make it look like I'm actually studying I go to MIT Open Course to look up facts that I learned in class that day. I have become a remarkable liar. I hope to be transferring in the fall and then I look forward to living a normal life. Coming clean is not an option at this point. This isn't necessarily something that could ruin my life. But it could ruin many others. I haven't told anyone before. My father recently went to prison for white collar crime that he plead guilty to. He didn't commit this crime. But the alternative was fighting a highly sensationalized, media obsessed, scapegoat case and potentially getting 20 plus years while he was in prison. I read his little blue book, which I knew contained all the missteps of everyone he's worked with. He has always been an extremely scrupulous man. So these offenses were something he took seriously enough to note. I have information on countless state employees, incredibly prominent and wealthy community members, numerous elected city state officials, and police officers. This information could ruin lives and start political controversy. My father is an incredible man and is not vengeful whatsoever. He will never use any of this info against these people. Despite the fact that most completely turned on him and stayed uninvolved at all costs or started pointing fingers. When I picture my aging father sitting in a maximum security jail cell sleeping on a metal sheet without a mattress, he wasn't give one until his fifth night. I am filled with rage for these people who could have stood up for their friend and prevented this.
While he still continues to be loyal, I still haven't decided which campaigns, if any, I'm going to ruin in the upcoming elections. I hate all of my friends, literally, I don't have anything in common with any of them, and don't care, but I'm too scared to be alone and have no one else to go to so I keep hanging around with them. I have been pretending to be colorblind to everyone I have ever known, including my own parents since I was in 3rd grade, I am now 28 years old, I even convinced an optometrist of it. Before your death, are you going to make your last words, fooled you? When I was 15 my parents were going through a divorce, my mom worked night shifts and my dad was living with a friend of his. One night my sister who was 19 at the time came home pretty drunk from a party. She was acting goofy and fell on the couch next to me. She started grabbing my leg and laughing and we started fondling. We ended up having sex right there. When we woke up the next day she had no recollection of the night before so I just kept my mouth shut. Fast forward to when I'm 18. Sister is home from college and dad is over for a visit. They get into an argument and in a fit of rage my dad announces how he has never forgiven her for the abortion she got when she was 19 and subsequently killing his grandchild. He's very religious. I then realize the baby she aborted was in fact mine. And as far as I know, I am the only one who knows since she has never mentioned that night. I accidentally killed 7 people. I put a rag into a new water heater exhaust to keep debris out and installed it in a rental. I get a call a week later. There's been an accident. I show up and there's a ton of M's and police. They ask me where the gas shut off is. And I go down to shut the gas off and see the end of the rag I forgot sticking out of the top of the heater. Whip the rag out. Shut the gas off and head upstairs only to be told all the tenants were dead. I drink all day now and sleep. It's killing me from the inside every single day. But if I say anything my family is ruined. We have a bunch of rental properties and we'd be shut down. I faked the last two years of college education. My parents put so much pressure on me I couldn't handle it. I was suffering from severe depression and anxiety. So I faked it all. Lied to everyone. Made up fake transcripts. I just got my foot in the door in my desired field thanks to a friend as they hired me as a subordinate. This place only hires college grads but no one double checked my credentials since I was recommended. My hopes is that if I need to find another job I'll have been at this place long enough to get it by experience alone. I work for a very prestigious company. I'm not bad at my job. I'm actually quite good. But my fear is eventually I'll hit a wall and the lie will come to light. No one has known this for the better part of a decade. It's a relief to finally say it out loud. I can't even tell those I love. My silence is my prison. If you get caught and go to a community college, you'll find a hilarious study group. I lit a tree on fire for kicks and ended burning half a forest down and several homes went up in flames in the process. I wanted to say I did that when I saw it on the news. My great uncle Jack used to live with my family. One day, he got drunk and had a bad fall that ended up causing him to bleed out. I ended up finding him. I was 14 at the time, and had never seen such an awful sight, and lost consciousness due to all the blood. When I eventually recovered, I called the ambulance and stayed with my uncle. He died in the back of the ambulance, holding my hand. No one knows about what happened to me, and if they did they would realize that I'm the reason he's dead. None of that is your fault. When you saw all that blood, you went into shock and fainted. You're not responsible for that. Second in this, it was an automatic response to seeing the blood. You have nothing to feel guilty about. If he died holding your hand he doesn't blame you, and you shouldn't blame yourself. No matter how old you were at the time, accidents happen. Clearly not your fault. I came very, very close to committing a school shooting. I was picked on a lot in high school. I think it was because I tried so hard to be cool and everyone saw right through it. There were these four cowboy jock types that gave it to me the worst. After being publicly humiliated and beaten in front of a girl I liked, as she laughed cheered, I decided that none of it was worth it anymore. I had no support at home being an only child and having parents that worked constantly, and cutting and burning myself didn't make me feel better anymore. So I got my dad's handgun out of the gun safe, he uses the same combo for everything. 
the idiot, and brought it to school with me the next day. I can't adequately describe to you guys how ready I was to kill these four. I had absolutely no fear or doubt in my mind. I wanted nothing more than to show everyone what happens when you push someone over the edge like they did. I had the gun tucked in my waistline. I was wearing this baggy pair of cargo shorts that I wore a couple times a week that day. I remember walking towards the cowboy's table, so goddamn ready for it to be over. When the gun fell out of my waistline, down my left short leg and made the loudest ducking sound as it hit the cafeteria floor. I tried my best to grab the gun real quick, but people saw what it was and screamed, and one of the instructors tackled me to the ground. They eventually concluded that I had brought the gun to school to impress people with badassery, and had no intention of using it. I was expelled and sent to live at a youth ranch in Idaho until I was 18. I did have the intention of using it though. I was going to kill all of them. I'm 24 now, and I still think about it all the time. I have not recovered from high school. I'm still terrified of people in general, and avoid having relationships because of what I fear I'm capable of. I'm not looking for pity, I know that what I did was wrong. It just feels good to tell the story. Thanks reddit. Too long didn't read I attempted a school shooting. I have been having sex with my cousin since I was 18. On and off for about 3 years. The worst part about it is that she is severely bipolar, hypersexual, and on disability, probably for life. It's consensual and she wants to do it more often, but I know I'm making things worse as opposed to helping her live a normal life. I think I first rationalized it as being a way to comfort and offer her companionship. Everyone in my family tells me how great it is that I'm one of the few people who can get through to her and get her to listen. Yeah it's like you are able to get inside her and understand her. I pick my nose and eat it with some regularity. No one knows that I do this. Including my girlfriend who I spend every night with. It probably wouldn't be all that catastrophic if people found out. But it certainly feels that way to me. My mom died when I was 17 and when it comes up I use it to garner attention for myself. In reality, I never met her and she has never meant anything to me other than a name. I feel so empty. I pee in the sink. I speak two languages so every time I received a new essay I would browse the topic in my own language and translate the text word by word to English then submitted it. No one ever caught me for plagiarism before. Half of Europe does this. IT guy here. It's amazing what people will do on their computers and say in their emails despite having to sign a waiver that all computer activity at work is monitored and recorded. I have half the company's banking, social media and personal email account info and passwords. I know who is secretly banging who at the office behind their spouse's backs. I know who is cybering at work and jerking it in the bathroom almost daily. At least they tell their sex chat partner they're running off to the bathroom to jerk it. Haven't felt the need to check the validity of that one. I know when people are having martial problems. Financial problems. I even know one person here had their children taken away because a social worker found cocaine in their house. I know who is embezzling money. I know when people get fired for completely bullshit reasons. Like they just want to replace them with someone younger and nicer on the eyes. And I know who my boss is buying Xanax and Vicodins from. Basically I have a treasure trove of my co-workers secrets. I won't actively do anything with this info. But it's nice knowing I have the ammunition there if something were to ever happen. That I've been considering suicide for the past few months. My friends know I'm going through a rough time. But if they knew I've come so close to actually killing myself. Everyone would see me differently. The only way they would know would be if it was already done. I don't want them to think of me like that if I do decide to continue living. So I haven't told anyone that knows me. I'm sure there are plenty of others in similar situations. Talk to someone. Anyone. There are anonymous helplines available and no one will ever know you called. Please. PM me or post back here if you want to talk to anyone. If you PM me your location I will happily link you to anonymous helplines. I'm sure the pain you are going through is unbearable. And talking may be hard at first. But just know that there is always someone to talk to. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.